Nothing in the universe is ever rock steady. Everything changes in time. Everything has periodic and non-periodic variations including the tilt of the earth's axis. The rotational axis of the earth is tilted by 23.5 degrees. It is the angle between the equator of the earth and the ecliptic plane, which means the plane in which the earth revolves around the sun. The rotational momentum of the spinning earth keeps its axis pointing in the same direction in space with the same tilt as it travels around the sun. Noting the steep variation of the earth's tilt in time, we ask in curiosity, did the ancients measure and record the tilt of the earth's axis? If they did, and if the measurement was accurate, that data would be invaluable for fixing that date in history. The Surya Siddhanta tilt data is extremely ancient, nearly 50 centuries old, that is about 3000 BC. Secondly, compared to the other values, it appears very imprecise. While the others have two or three decimal places, the Indian value is a whole integer. I mean, what are the chances that the tilt was exactly 24 degrees when the ancient Indian astronomer measured it? Very, very unlikely. And so it happened that the European scholars dismissed this Indian value of the obliquity as a sloppy effort of measurement. Their two conclusions are as follows. The ancient Indian astronomer was a poor observer. His data is not to be trusted within one degree. Perhaps he had some poor instruments or perhaps he was not technically competent or both. Second is, the Surya Siddhanta dates from 400 AD. The tilt at that date was 23.7 degrees. The best the Indian could do with his poor instruments and inadequate technical ability was to record the tilt as approximately 24 degrees. Now, if you were to peruse the Surya Siddhanta, you would be struck by a few things. The first is, very elaborate and elegant planetary models. The second is very concise instructions. The third one is extremely precise data. For example, the value of the sidereal year is given as 365.2587565 days. The moon's absidal period is 8.848778 years. Its nodal period is 18.6016 years, etc. How in the world can the Surya Siddhanta contain an imprecise value like 24 degrees for the tilt when all the rest of the data is super precise? In verse 28 of chapter 2, it is stated, The sign of the greatest declination is 1397. The greatest declination is another way of stating the obliquity of the Earth's axis. The value is given as 1397 is what is known as an R sign. It is simply the sign of the angle of declination of the Sun multiplied by the standard Indian radius of 3438. It is called Agra in Indian studies on spherics. To get the obliquity in degrees, we have to take the inverse sign of the ratio 1397 by 3438. And so, we obtain the Indian obliquity value as sine inverse 1397 by 3438 is equal to 23.975182 degrees. Hey now wait a minute, that is not 24 degrees. Now, let us take a look at the Indian sign table. The table contains 24 rows with the angle in each row incrementing by 3.75 degrees till it reaches 90 degrees. The sign of each angle is expressed as an R sign, radius times the sign, which is nothing but the modern sign of the angle multiplied by 3438, which is nothing but the Indian standard radius. Focus on the last two columns. The second last column is a modern calculation of the R sign of the angle, while the last column is the Indian R sign value. Now if you observe, this table shows that the precision of the Indian R sign is 1 by 3438. That said, let us calculate the R sign of 24 degrees. We obtain sign of 24 into 3438 is equal to 1398.36. Well, well, what do you know? The modern R sign of 24 degrees is 1398.36. 
and knowing that Indian R signs are rounded up or rounded down to the nearest 1 by 3438, the Surya Siddhanta would have stated 24 degrees as either 1399 which is rounded up or 1398 which is rounded down, but never 1397. That is, 24 degrees can never be represented as 1397 in the Indian system. Who in the world declared that Surya Siddhanta gives a whole 24 degrees for the obliquity? Who declared the value of 1397? This is where we come to know about the colonial deception. Starting in the early 1800s, Western scholars cast their attention on several problematic areas in Indian astronomy that stood in the way of final solution to permanently put the Indian science in its place. The Orientalists and the Colonialists were instructed that any ancient culture should not go beyond 4000 BC because according to the Bible, that is when the world began. So a text like Surya Siddhanta with the 24 degree tilt was identified early on as a high priority as it directly indicated a period around 3000 BC which, apart from causing conflicts with Christian theology, also gave Indian astronomy and Indian civilization an unwelcome halo of very ancient culture. To dampen this very old Indian culture, the British scholars made manipulations in the translation of these texts. Some of these British scholars suggested that the Indians were poor observers and thus the recorded 24 degrees where the actual tilt was much lesser. According to Mr. Bentley, the Hindu astronomers make it a rule in observing to take the nearest round numbers rejecting fractional quantities. In 1858, a 24 degree deception was finally set in stone by Professor Dwight William Whitney and his committee, which brought out the first English translation of the Surya Siddhanta. They translated the above verse as follows. The greatest declination, that is to say, the inclination of the plane of the ecliptic is here stated to be 24 degrees since 1397 is the sign of that angle. And in this casual manner, the colonial scholars managed to trivialize and hide in plain sight the most direct proof of the great antiquity of Indian astronomy. Their success can be gauged from the fact that no one bothered to verify this for the past 150 years. The obliquity or the tilt of the Earth's axis is given as 23.975 degrees in the Surya Siddhanta, which was nudged to 24 degrees whole by the colonials, thereby trivializing and obfuscating one of the fundamental markers of the antiquity of Indian astronomy. From the obliquity curve, a tilt of 23.975 degrees indicates a period around 3000 BC which is very close to the accepted date of the Kali Epoch, namely 3102 BC. Having seen that the obliquity data in the Surya Siddhanta dates from 3000 BC, we are naturally curious to know if any other data in Indian astronomy points to the same period. We currently know of at least three other items in Indian astronomy that point to 3000 BC or thereabouts. The value of the sun's equation of center given in the Surya Siddhanta indicates a time range of 3000 BC or older. The ubiquitously mentioned pole star in Indian astronomy and literature, namely Dhruva, which is the modern name for Thuban, indicates a period about 3000 BC. It is mentioned in the Shatapat Brahman text that the Kritika nakshatra rises exactly in the east which occurred only in ancient times around 3000 BC. Nowadays, Kritika rises between East and Northeast. We will explore these points in our next videos. So if you like our research, then follow our page Satyalok on Instagram and help us to spread the greatness of ancient India with as many people as we can. Stay tuned, stay educated and last but not the least, know your culture by self-investigating the truth. Shubhaste Panthanaha Santu, Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Tan tan ta, tere ke ta tan tan ta, tet tet tere ke ta tere ke ta tet tet tan ta, tere ke ta tere ke ta tan tere ke ta tan ta, tan ta tan ta, tere ke ta tere ke 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 ta tan 
Da 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 da